Hello, good evening, and welcome to BOI Impact. I am Hadiza Olao Shibiko. Tonight's program shall be featuring the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investments Retreat for Ministries, Departments and Agencies, MDAs. The retreat that took place in Makodi, the Benue State Capital, was designed to bring the MDAs up to speed on the industry, trade and investment component of this administration's economic recovery plan, especially the diversification of Nigeria's economy through the development of the industrial sector. The theme of the retreat was implementing the economic recovery and growth plan through industry, trade and investment. Presentations were made by the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Okechuku Enelama, Honorable Minister of State, Hajia Aisha Abubakar, the Permanent Secretary, Aminu Aliu Bisalla, and the Economic Advisor to the President, Dr. Yemi Dikweolu, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Jumoke Uduwole. Others were resource persons from Unido ECOWAS representative and Nigeria's regional director, Jean Bakoli, a renowned economist, Ayo Teriba, leadership coach and governance expert, Linus Okori, the CEOs of some of the ministry's agencies and parastatus. Amongst them were those of the Bank of Industry, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, Sweden, Industrial Training Fund, ITF, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, and the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, NIPC. Others were Nigerian Export Processing Zone Authority, NEPSA, Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, and the Standard Organization of Nigeria, SOA. Here are highlights of the retreat as captured by BOI's impact crew. The retreat kick-started with welcome remarks by the Honorable Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, represented by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Mr. Aliu Bisella. This retreat, which is a follow-up to the 2016 held at Oni, will involve paper presentation, robust discussion, and the generation of community which will serve as a platform for the cross-fertilization of ideas and strategies for implementing the economic recovery and growth plan. It is my sincere belief that participants will make concerted efforts to ensure that they contribute constructively and come up with ideas and strategies that will accelerate the much-needed development and economic growth in the country. There were also goodwill messages from the ministry's foreign and domestic development partners. We believe that Nigeria is on the good trajectory to overcome the recession soon. The vision of the economic recovery and growth plan, in my view, is very catalytic, dynamic and innovative. I believe that if this plan is fully and well implemented, it will bring out the significant economy potential of Nigeria being the first economy in Africa, which will lead the economy, the country economy performance in the coming decade. In this line, UNIDO is strongly committed to support the remarkable effort of the government to increase the national productivity to achieve sustainable industrialization through value addition and sustainable diversification of the production for the economic growth and poverty reduction. I cannot forget to commend the aptness of the team of this uh, retreat, especially now that the country is going through recession and this has affected both the federal and the state uh, governments in meeting their developmental needs, including salary uh, payment. It is expected that the retreat will come out with recovery strategies that will assist the government at various levels to overcome daunting economic challenges and chart the way forward. In his keynote address and presentation on the ministry's vision, the Honorable Minister Dr. Okechuku Endelama enjoined the MDAs to complement the efforts of the federal government in transforming the economy of the country
by working together to achieve the ministry's goal and the present administration's drive to economic recovery and growth. If I think about what is my vision for us, both for this retreat and for the ministry as a whole, you know, my vision for us is for us to be the engine, the engine room for the implementation of this uh, economic recovery and growth plan. In other words, what do I mean by that? If you think about what the economic, and, uh, the economic recovery and growth plan is seeking to do, and you think about all the various ministries and their roles, there's no question that we are mission critical. We are, we, are, we are at the heart of it. We need to get it right. If we don't get it right, it will come at great cost to the nation and to, to the government as a whole. So I hope that I can challenge you and say, please, let's take this responsibility seriously and let's work at it you know, and get the results that we seek. Some of the objectives we seek to achieve at this management retreat include to create a, condu a conducive platform for top management of the ministry and its parastatals to brainstorm and discuss the newly launched economic recovery and growth plan and evolve strategies for achieving industrial targets in the plan document. To, dis to discuss topical issues relating to inclusive and sustainable industrial development in our country, to provide inputs for effective implementation of our own draft strategic plan. That's a plan for METI. We have our own plan, and I hope we'll begin to implement and implement in earnest. And of course, to promote interagency cooperation and synergies amongst our various agencies and um, arms of government. Distinguished delegates, you will agree with me that at this moment in our history, there is an urgent need to drive structural economic transformation and reforms with emphasis on improving public sector efficiency and repositioning the ministry for efficient and effective implementation of its mandate and to place the country on the path of growth and sustainable development. At a time such as this, we must be courageous enough to take actions that will change the structure of the economy and make it more productive. The economic advisor to the president and senior special assistant to the president on industry, trade and investment also made their presentations on the way forward. What are the top execution priorities of the economic recovery and growth plan? There are five of them. Basically, is to stabilize the macroeconomic environment, aligning monetary fiscal policies, accelerating um, non-oil uh, revenue, uh, cutting costs drastically, and of course, privatizing select assets. So I'll just go into the plan itself now. And basically to say it has three fundamental objectives. The first was restoring growth. And by restoring growth, we meant first of all, just getting out of the recession, but also getting out of the recession by improving macroeconomic balances but also using other levers to drive the economy. And I will speak to them later, but the whole idea of ensuring that there are linkages, forward and backward linkages, between industrial uh, sectors of, and other sectors of the economy. Again, this is critical. Solid mineral, agriculture, and oil. The idea, at the end of the day, is to have an internally articulated uh, economy, an economy in which various sectors speak to one another, other than a sector that just exports everything that it produces and has no inputs into the industrial sector, or an industrial sector that is not keyed into the service sector of the economy. The way we come up with the reforms has not changed. We come up with ideas and what we had from feedback, and then we engage with the MDAs, what their priorities are, what they're working on, what their challenges are, and then we, we assist with uh, driving through the action plans that we put together. And we basically, the idea is to hand it over. The MDAs need to own and champion their own reforms. And then any support they need from the council or from the presidency, whoever else, then that's available for them. But the next thing we're doing is we're holding a hackathon at the end of the month to make sure that Nigerian youth techpreneurs are able to come up with a whistleblowing solution to make sure that these reforms that we say we've done, anybody can really challenge the administration just by having a, a, an app on your phone to say, look, I was at a visa on arrival, I was charged $200 for a visa that cost $50. This is where I was, this was the officer, and then we'll, we'll handle it back in. We're also um, administering a survey to Nigerian public for the Trading Within Nigeria um, reform indicator, just to make sure that the priorities are aligned. It's not just what we think the problem is, but what they said, not just anecdotally, but in a structured empirical manner, 
what agencies and what the top three problems are so that we have a targeted and meaningful intervention. In concluding, I'll just say that the most important things are really institutionalizing the change. So the MDAs really having ownership of the process and collaboration is key, whether the federal government and state government, whether the federal government with National Assembly and the judiciary, or whether the federal government with private sector. So it's, it's really heartwarming that MITI has supported this initiative and opened it up, not tried to carry this whole initiative alone, but opened it up to other ministries to really come along and, and pull in the same direction. The traction is much uh, faster and it's much deeper. And also the public are responding very well. So it's a, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, and this is just the beginning, so we'll keep you um, posted as we go along. Thank you very much for listening. In his presentation, a renowned economist, Dr. Ayo Teriba, stressed the need for infrastructure development. Nigeria must shift from reliance on export income to foreign investment inflows. We must diversify our external earnings. Shift from reliance on capital budget to foreign investment. Shift from emphasis on big sectors to emphasis on infrastructure. There is a recognition lag that when an economic problem emerges, like when the recession <coughs> happened, the devaluation happened, there is usually a time lag when you are trying to, like when the government was consulting with experts. And that lag is followed by a decision lag that this is what we want to do. When you decide, it's followed by an action lag. When you actually take action. And when you take action, it's followed by an impact lag. In all the training program that is designed to enable the SMEs grow, all the business planning, they are very good. Most of the time, can we step beyond the business planning and all other technical issues and begin to go back to the value set? That if we are able to begin to teach these people the value set they have missed out from the educational system, they didn't teach them that much. And we go through a, a clinic, a leadership clinic that enables these people to be sound in all of this that I've mentioned. In times of trouble, they will always have something that will drive them from the inside. The acting managing director of the Bank of Industry, Wahid Olagunju, in his presentation shared experiences of some of the bank's positive moves towards the nation's economic recovery through MSMEs and large enterprises development. What have we done between now and last year? Well, we've tried to increase access to credit. We've tried to ensure that we support more SMEs in the country, particularly through youth-centric programs. The Honorable Minister launched YES program in March last year. And under that scheme, we were able to train Nigerians through a number of business development service providers, including the Enterprise Development Center of the Pan-Atlantic University. Peter Bankoli leads that process, and the Cardinal Business School and uh, other uh, institutions. We lend that 9%, but under the GEF, we've been highly successful. That's in collaboration with the NYSC. We've been able to lend up to about 500 million naira, and they're performing, and they're doing well. Now, because we know who they are, and the NYC can help us monitor them. We've decided to drop interest rates on Jeff. So we now lend to Jeff beneficiary at zero interest, you know, to make life easier for them. Then, of course, partnerships. We cannot do this alone. It's a huge country, 774 local governments. We cannot have offices in every local government. Our cost to income will not even allow it. They will do expensive. So we have to go into partnerships with enterprise development centers, microfinance banks, and other uh, intermediary uh, lenders, um, LAPO, Lotus, etc. And then, of course, footprints. We've increased our offices between last year and now. January last year, we had 15 offices. Now we have 21. We opened six new uh, branches. Then, of course, in terms of fund mobilization, we've also been able to engage uh, five additional states in terms of fund uh, mobilization because it enables us to lead a single digit. Capacity building that I talked about earlier, we need to build the capacity of our people. Our people are highly entrepreneurial, they are highly enterprising, but most of them lack knowledge 
It's in the Bible, it's in the Christ's holy books. My people perish for lack of knowledge. So we need to invest a lot in the area of education. And that's where um, ITF and Smedan come into play. We are collaborating with uh, the three of us to help build the capacity of Nigerians across the country. And we are doing this, I mean, through all the local governments. Uh, and we have to do to increase collaboration with OPS bodies and uh, our development partners across the country. Well, at BOI on our own, we conducted uh, eight gemstone capacity building programs and then uh, the uh, tomato training thing within in Kano and, uh, and Lagos. And then the African Development too. There is a technical assistance component. So we're conducting capacity building programs for current and potential SMEs in 12 states across the country. And then um, we're interacting more with our customers. And then lastly, um, 2016, we recorded a 10% growth from 156 billion to 171 billion. And this uh, uh, facilities can potentially generate about 855 direct and indirect jobs. And more importantly, our lending to MSME is increased by 42% from 5.6 billion to 8 billion in 2016, compared with the 1.8 billion annual average in previous years. Efficiency-wise, Bank of Industry stands as as well as the most efficient financial institution in the country. And then, of course, our ratings are one of the highest. In fact, as per Fitch, BOI stands out as the best rated in Nigeria, wholly owned by Nigerians and managed by Nigerians. A <laughs> applause. And this can be very, this can be very To what extent do you think the Bank of Industry can take advantage of diaspora funds. During the week, we signed an MOU with the special assistant to the president on diaspora matters. And one of the things we are looking at is being able to mobilize resources, external resources. But then we are hoping that what funds we can get from diasporans will be under concessional terms. The terms will be different. We are looking to a situation whereby when you raise dollars from a diaspora, he might not insist on repaying you in dollars because they're emotionally connected to the country. We could talk to them into seeing that we invest the money in Nigeria rather than plowing it back to them. Because diasporans help India a lot. They're helping Israel. They're helping even a country like Bangladesh. You know, so we are able to connect to them. They will not talk to us the way market-oriented institutions will talk to us abroad. The leadership of Smedan, NIPC, NEPC and other agencies also made presentations on their activities towards improving the investment climate in the country. One of the major things we do, we are presently doing in Smedan is the implementation of OLOC. That is one local government, one product, the recent version of it. What we intend to achieve by that is to create to identify organic clusters and then try to build the capacity of them, access to equipment, working capital, and workspace. Our intention in 2017 is to reach 109 clusters across the 109 senatorial districts in Nigeria. The ITF is privileged to be part of the job creation initiative of the federal government of Nigeria through our parent ministry and is primed to take MSME sector to a greater height as no nation can attain greatness without developing a critical mass of skilled manpower. Our people consider skills as the three Ds, dirty, dangerous, and dreaded. But in Singapore, it is considered as jobs meant that you need to engage with hands on, minds on, and hearts on. They are foregone. It is considered as dignity in labor. As a result of that, I urge all of us here to support and oil the wheel of the trial. ITF, Smidan, Bank of Industry. I'm most grateful. Um, NIPC is an advocacy agency. I tell people we don't have the power of compulsion. We only have the power of persuasion. So it's important for NIPC's work that we work very closely you know, with many agencies. So an important part of NIPC's strategy is uh, encouraging and promoting the investment culture, in particular amongst wealthy Nigerians. 
So NIPC has been working in particular um, this year with state governments on a state-by-state -state basis, informally in the first instance, to generate a list of the 10 to 20 wealthiest Nigerians on a state-by-state -state basis. In our view, this is the best way to ensure that we can socialize development capital equally across Nigeria. We articulated a clear vision, that's the zero plan, which is now, like I said, an integral part of the federal government's economic recovery and growth plan. Uh, we have interagency collaborations we're working on. When we set up the zero reject committee, I, I set it up then with 17 uh, government agencies, but the federal government has adopted that now, and that's what we are using. Uh, and we are now developing uh, 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 standard uh, procedures for many of our uh, products uh, that we are taking to the farmers uh, to grow because of traceability. So things are really happening. We also worked with uh, uh, ITF and uh, so on on the na national quality infrastructure. And when that is released very soon, it will really help our uh, trade uh, matters. The retreat was rounded off by the Honorable Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Hajia Aisha Abubakar. I think the theme last year had to do with diversification of the economy and we've made so much, so much progress and I think we need to applaud ourselves for the milestones that we've taken. Um, the key word now for us is the economic recovery and growth plan and um, I don't think there's any other ministry in the entire Federal Republic of Nigeria that has a more critical role to play than our ministry. We have the responsibility of devising and developing the policies around implementation of that plan and then we also have the parasitals who are the enablers for, for that plan. So I think we still have a lot of work to do to make this change. And every time I hear our president say, we must look inwards, we must eat what we produce and produce what we must eat. Responsibility lies on us as Nigerians. We need to be more sincere in the things that we say we're going to do. We need to create the enabling environment so we need to build on the skills. We need to be able to work very hard and creating or bridging the gap that existed. And we can't do this if we're going to continue to rely on foreign direct investment and so on and so forth. But we need the money. So I know we need to, to, to learn how to manage things. But at the core of this is all about the made in Nigeria. How you think, how you want your country to be, right down to your local governments. What is it? When we look at the Made in Nigeria initiative, we know that um, what we eat, what we wear, is Made in Nigeria. Those were the highlights of the two-day retreat of the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment to fast-track the rapid development of Nigeria's industrial sector. During the course of the program, you had the Honorable Minister and other resource persons, as well as heads of departments and agencies in the ministry, on how their embarking on various creative ways and means with common goal of taking Nigeria out of economic recession as well as improving the ease of doing business in the country. The government is playing its part and we at the Bank of Industry will continue to play our role as other parastatals in the ministry to make sure Nigeria is steadfast on the path of economic recovery and growth. You can contact any of these agencies for further inquiries by visiting their website or better still, call at their offices. It's on this note that will wrap up this week's edition of the program. I am Hadiza. Olao Shebikoins, good evening and have yourself an enterprising week. Bye for now.